this is pretty huge, man. One Piece chapter five, excuse me, 959. God dog, man. We got so many chapters. I'm getting them mixed up now. <laughs> Damn, 959 chapters, man. Damn, you know, I, I still have moments where I pinch myself when I think back to 2015 and I say, there ain't no way in hell I'm gonna like One Piece. And here we are six years later and we're still continuing this damn journey, man. Like, holy crap, dude. Like, this is crazy. It's, it's really a testament to how good this series is, though. But, you know, jumping back into the actual chapter review, that's what you guys are here for. You know, essentially, this, this chapter is one of those times where I like the message in it, man. Like, you know, Kanemon got some slick shit that he says in this chapter, man. Kanemon's like, yo, Momonosuke, we want you to live a long life, but, you know, it's okay to take those first steps alone. It's okay. And I'm like, man, I was just saying that shit, you know, last chapter. Like, yo, you know, Kanemon needs to learn. It's like, wait a second, Kanemon already learned the fucking lesson. And, you know, Otis, like, yo, Kryptonian, you, you're slipping. You're slipping. The critique you got of my, of my character, I'm literally going to correct it the next week. Like, God damn, dude. But, you know, like, the thing is, it's like, Kanemon is like, look, your father understood in order to truly go about change somebody has to step out on the balcony first and you get that last panel where odin is returning to wano and everybody's like hide your daughters i'm like oh he's a panty snatcher hide your children I'm like oh he's a children toucher hide your livestock i'm like okay this guy's just a whole savage and then you get the line where it's like why can't you just die anyway i'm like oh this guy's a whole ass loser and that's what makes that so beautiful because that tells you that at some point Odin is able to actually change the opinions of the people around him to a point where they're actually supporting him. And that is so beautiful to see a huge change like that. Just a complete 180. That's a beautiful story to see in this instance right here. So I was very excited to actually get to that panel right there to see that part. And I like how just as Odin tried to bring about change, I think it was 39 years ago, just as Odin tried to bring about that change and had to walk by himself, Momonosuke and Kanemon, they're both having to walk alone in their own individual journeys. While Momonosuke is technically there, the fact that he is the the future ruler of Wano, he's walking by himself by even greenlighting this whole attack, this way to overthrow Orochi and overthrow Kaido. You know, even though he's probably not going to be swinging that blade around much, I think he's going to fight a little bit, but even though he's not going to be swinging that blade around, this is still an important first step for him along that journey. So I thought that that was really, really good. Like, you know, I guess say like the technical first step was when he revealed himself. I don't really count that because he was revealed by accident. But on this, this is a clear thing. By even allowing Kanemon to talk him into it, this is where he's taking those first steps and his balls are dropping. Very much in love with this. But we got to say this too for Kanemon. After having your plan fall apart like this, Kanemon's in a situation where the payoff is going to be so much worth it once he actually finds a way to actually pull this off. I don't know how, but right now, you know, their backs are completely against the wall. They are by themselves. And one thing that they do have going for them is that Orochi is very, very confident, as he should be. And you see some of what Nico Robin was able to uncover, that the guy's paranoid when it comes to the ghost of Wano returning. And you get this beautiful moment where as everything is being laid out you see all the celebrations everybody's like yo we're gonna have the ports ready Kanemon's like man 4200 men we did a really good job we about to we about to fuck these dudes up they don't know what's coming for them luffy's dressed up in the samurai gear luffy's like i want all the smoke with kaido i even brought an inhaler to help help that dude if he don't want no smoke with me like luffy is all the way ready and you get the back and forth banter with Zoro and Sanji and even Nami chips in because you have this moment where Sanji's like, hey, don't you want some of that samurai stuff too? And that's when Zoro says like, yo, it's only going to slow me down. And that's when, you know, Sanji just hits the Zoro button. He says like, yo, that's why your bounty's lower. <laughs> yo, on the real though, I fucking forgot 
that Sanji's bounty got a little bit higher than Zoro's after Whole Cake Island. I fucking forgot that. I think it's like five or ten uh, bounties higher, so or five or ten uh, million berries higher. So I thought that that was kind of cool to see that. And I like how when you know Zoro just slices the whole fucking beach in half. You know, Nami, as that cliff is falling, Nami's like, what do you two think you're doing? She's, you know, screaming and everything. I thought that that was kind of funny just to see the banter. I'm like, man, like, how did things end so badly then? How did it go this badly to where it's just Kanemon by himself? And what I like in this moment is how, as they're talking about their plans, you know, Luffy is looking out at the sea and he's waiting for Jinbei. And that's when I said, okay... I fucking forgot about Jinbi because, you know, Jinbi did say, like, hey, I'm going to bring my ass out there. You get out of here and I'll meet you at Wano. And you have it where Luffy says, well, Big Mom's already here, but Jinbi isn't here yet. Even though he was the one who helped us escape from her, he made up his mind. He joined our crew. And Zoro's like, yeah, sure. I guess we'd be happy to have the dude on crew. But... You get this line where somebody tells Luffy, there's still time. I'm sure he'll come if he's alive. And Luffy's shouting. And I don't know if Luffy's shouting because the idea that somebody presents that Jinbi will join if he's alive is something that offends him or if this was also something for Luffy himself. I'm leaning more towards the first part because as you guys have told me and as I've learned, it's taken a long ass time. But Oda... Oda, when he kills people, you, you wait for the actual body to show. You don't do it off screen. You know, Oda, you know, if you don't see the body, that person ain't dead. So I'm not going to say Jinbi got turned into fish sticks and Big Mom ate the dude. I don't think that that's the case. However, what I'll say, though, is I like how you have this moment where it looks like Kanemon's wife got made because... Those people are saying like, look, Suru, don't sacrifice for us. You don't have to cover for us. It's okay. You know, our dream's going to be fulfilled. And Hold'em is looking like, yo, wait a second. You ain't on this shit too? And that's when you get this moment where, you know, Kanemon says, I know you know what happened. My wife was among those people. Again, I'm not going to say she's dead because we don't see the actual body. But you just see how all of a sudden everything went to hell in a handbasket quick, which is... All those beast pirates, they're flying out there and they're just dropping all these explosives. The hideout where the Thousand Sunny was, destroyed. The bridge, destroyed. The port, destroyed. Everything is just getting blown up. And you see it how Orochi is just marking off places all over the map. And he's like, I know that the intel's solid. I know that there's no way you could have come here from the past, but I ain't leaving nothing to chance. And that is a very dangerous person right there. However, what I will say is that I thought that this was pretty damn interesting because we're in a situation where now they have to adapt to the situation at hand. What I'm hoping for, though, is in order for us to truly appreciate them taking back Wano, I really hope Oda gives us this flashback. Like, I really hope we get this flashback, man, because we're in a situation now where... I swear to God, man, like this arc is just missing a little bit more emotional investment. That's all that it needs in order for this to be a classic arc. Just a little bit more investment. Obviously, that can be ruined if the ending of this arc is absolute dog shit. But the way this is trending now, this has potential to be a classic arc. So my chapter question to you guys is if you're currently reading Wano right now in the manga, and I know I'm still playing catch-up, so I know that the arc is still going on. If you're currently reading Wano in the manga right now, on a scale from 1 to 10, what do you give Wano as an arc? And where does Wano rank in the, the top 10 best arcs in One Piece? Let me know down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.